Greetings YouTube, Joe here with Colonation Media and welcome back to another episode The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, this is episode number 45 And in this episode we're taking on the boss of the Water Temple and getting out of here So on the third level where this statue where we could not reach before um, You can now use the long shot to get over there and grab some fairies in the pots if you think you're going to need them I already have one but I'm not really worried about it Now you have to go up this little ramp thing um, which kind of sucks because it's steep. The easiest way to do it is as soon as the uh, blade goes past you to start running and just not stop. Don't try to go to the side or anything like that or you'll slide down or get hit. All right, we're in the boss chamber. Colonation, look out. That isn't normal water over there. So all you need to do to trigger the fight is jump onto one of these pillars. And this is by far the dumbest boss I've ever seen. And it's a disgrace to this game because the rest of this game is amazing. And this is the worst boss fight uh, of the entire game. And because of that, I'm going to punish Nintendo by uh, taking the cheap way out. And I'm going to defeat this boss in hopefully less than 60 seconds, we'll see. I'm not really going to time it, but um, I'm going to cheap shot it. <sighs> anyway, uh, it's this giant aquatic amoeba, Morpha. It has a cool name, but it's a giant amoeba. Really? Really, Nintendo? An amoeba is the best thing you can come up with after that amazing uh, boss fight with Shadow Link? So you need to use the long shot, obviously, to pull it out of the water, and then you can slice it. But what I'm going to do is cheap shot it by going over and standing in the corner and actually it can't even hit you, it can't reach you from over here uh, if you stand all the way in the corner. Once you hookshot it, uh, just keep hookshotting it, get in front of it so that it's facing the corner and then when you slice it, Morpha will automatically move away from you and because of this, it's moving straight into the corner and can't go anywhere and you can just slice the crap out of it and if you want, pull out the Vigoron Sword, do double damage and down it goes that fast. And yeah, that's pretty much what Morpha deserves. Um, and actually, I'm kind of offended that it didn't die faster considering it's an amoeba. Worst battle of the entire game. You guys didn't miss anything. Uh, it's just basically repeating the same process. It only has two attacks to begin with. Uh, so really not missing anything. Most of the time, it will try to suck you into that little tube of blue evil and it'll throw you against the wall and there's spikes over there and all that stuff uh, but really not that hard of a battle even if you fight the whole thing um, and just use the master sword but whatever let's go down here the water has drained from this pool area we can pick up a heart container and uh, yeah now we can teleport out of here and we will go meet the sage of the water temple and then uh, move on so, to the Chamber of the Sages. And this sage is very predictable, um, as she's who appeared at the beginning of this temple and then just somehow disappeared at the same time. I'm guessing it was Morpha's doing. It is Rudo, the Princess of the Zoras. Culination. I would have expected no less from the man I chose to be my husband. Look, we're not getting married, bitch. Get over it. Zora's domain and its people will eventually return to their original state. Well, that's just fantastic. That's kind of why I was doing what I was doing in the first place. I grant my eternal love to you. Well, that's what I want to say, but I don't think I can offer that now. Well, golly, doesn't that just suck? Actually, I'm kind of relieved. I have to guard the water temple as the sage of water. And you, you're searching for the princess. Zelda? Ha! You can't hide anything from me. Whoa, somebody's jelly. Jelly, jelly, jelly. Princess Zelda, she's alive. I can sense it, so don't be discouraged. Okay, I won't be discouraged. I can tell that nothing will stop you in your quest for justice and peace. You must take this medallion. Take it respectfully. No, I'm going to spit on it. I'm going to spit on it and rub it along the crease of my butt crack. Respectfully. Anywho, uh, yeah, it's the water medallion. That's what we get for defeating the, um, the fierce Morpha. Rudo awakens as a sage and adds her power to yours. Yeah, if you couldn't tell, I really just dislike 
the anticlimactic Morpha boss. I think Volvagia is like a gajillion times better. I, mean, I even think that Goma in the Dooku tree is a better boss than Morpha. Come on. Okay, well with Morpha defeated and the curse being broken, Zora's domain will go back to normal and it is no longer frozen over and the water will rise in Lake Hylia once again, just like it did in the past. And Sheik will be there to meet us when we uh, teleport back outside of uh, the water temple, back at Lake Hylia by the tree. And we're gonna talk to Sheik a little bit before we get another item. Did Ruto want to thank me? Yes, she wanted to thank you. No need to stroke your own ego, Sheik. We have to return peace to Hyrule for her sake too, don't we? No, screw her. Look at that, Culination. Together, you and Princess Ruto destroyed the evil monster. And by together, you mean that she got captured or lost and or disappeared and then got jealous of Princess Zelda afterwards after I did all the work? Maybe that's what you mean? Whatever. Moving on to a much more important subject. Sheik is going to uh, just go ahead and disappear. We don't actually get the next song here yet, uh, but we need to go somewhere else to get it uh, for the next temple. Ah, I see you up there, you sneaky Sheik. And he's going to dive like a fishy into the lake, and he's gone. Just like that. Ninja skills, as always, by the amazing Sheik. So, we have one thing that we need to do here before uh, we leave and head back to Kakariko Village because that is our, our uh, next destination. Take out your bow and when it's morning, uh, if it's not morning you can play the sun song, you're going to want to shoot uh, this sun directly in front of uh, that little panel and fire arrows will uh, descend from the sun onto that platform. Uh, you can't get the fire arrows unless you've beaten the water temple or at least gotten the long shot. If you have the long shot and haven't beaten the temple yet, you can get the fire arrows. We see how Navi is uh, turning green. You can play the scarecrow song and use the long shot to shoot up here. Anyway, we got the fire arrow. Set it to C and your arrows will be powered up. If you hit your target, it will catch fire. Uh, so this does require magic power as well as arrows, obviously. And it does a lot of damage, and it also sets your opponents on fire, and this isn't actually a necessary item in the game until the end. But anyway, that's it. Okay, one more thing that we have to do that I kind of forgot about, but I want to make sure that we do it, because I was on my way to Kakariko Village, and I was like, crap, I forgot this. At night, there is a golden Skulltula up here on the top of this tree. Now that we have the long shot, we can get up here. Oh, crap, gotta kill him. Kill him. Kill him before the sun comes out. Die, 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 die. Uh. Goodness gracious, that was close. Okay. Now we literally have everything that we need to here. I don't know why I said literally. Totally. <sighs> Back to Kakariko. I swear I am just kind of hyper today. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Whatever. Okay, so. We are heading back to Kakariko Village because this is going to be the cutscene, kind of like the gateway to the next temple. Even though I don't think I'm going to do the next temple right away, I think I'm actually going to go to Gerudo Fortress first. But uh, nonetheless, the next time you enter Kakariko Village after defeating the Forest Fire and Water Temples, this cutscene uh, will begin. And a lot of Kakariko Village is on fire here. and. That's kind of strange. There's smoke everywhere, and Sheik is kind of just standing there by the well, uh, looking inside. And if you remember correctly, there's some type of evil that's supposed to be in there. At this point, we would have to head back into the past uh, to get the Lens of Truth. But since we already have that, uh, that's not uh, necessarily have. Uh, that's not necessarily going to be our next step because we already did that. Whoa! What is that? So some invisible force is going to come out of the well and throw Sheik to the ground, which is kind of crazy because we've never seen Sheik manhandled like that, nor have we ever seen Sheik even attacked. Uh, but this thing is uh, apparently pretty powerful. So we draw our sword, and this thing is going to come full circle and head right at us. And 
Uh, with our current power, we really don't have anything that we can do to defend against it. And yeah, lots of screaming from Link because he just can't handle it. Uh, and this thing pretty much owns him. So the scene cuts yet again, and I'm kind of like just laying there. Apparently, we were knocked unconscious for a little bit. Looks like you're coming around. Yeah, thanks, Sheik. It appears that way, doesn't it? Culination, a terrible thing has happened. The evil shadow spirit has been released. Well, I saw that. Uh, it looked very dangerous. Impa, the leader of Kakariko Village, has sealed the evil shadow spirit in the bottom of the well. But the force of the evil spirit got so strong that the seal of the well broke and it escaped into the world. Well, that could be a problem. A very big problem. I believe Impa has gone to the Shadow Temple to seal it again, but she will be in danger without any help. So where exactly is the Shadow Temple, though? Impa is one of the six sages. Destroy the evil Shadow Spirit and save Impa. And for those of you that don't know, Impa is uh, the caretaker for Princess Zelda, and she is the Sheikah that we talked to in the past. Uh, and was also the Sheikah that was riding with Zelda when she escaped from Hyrule Castle. The only thing I can do for you is teach you the melody that will lead us to the Shadow Temple. This is the melody that will draw you into the infinite darkness that absorbs even time. Listen to this, the Nocturne of Shadow. So we can't actually get to the Shadow Temple without playing this. There's no way to get to it like with the other temples. You can't just like walk up to it. Uh, you do need to play this. So, this is a pretty cool uh, melody. I don't know, I always thought it sounded pretty cool. It's not that difficult to remember. It is kind of a lot of notes, but at the same time, uh, it's not crazy difficult. So when you are ready to go to the Shadow Temple, all you have to do is pull out this melody, give it a play, and it will warp you to right outside the temple. We're not going to be doing that right away. I do think we're gonna be going to Gerudo Fortress. Uh, and maybe tying up some loose ends with some heart pieces and things like that. Uh, but anyway, that is the Nocturne of Shadow. Let me take care of the village. I'm counting on you, Colonation. And Sheik, as always, is going to back away slowly and disappear. That's going to be the end of this episode, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And please stay tuned for episode number 46. Game on.